All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back for week number five of Backyard Bookie. Scott, five weeks in, um, weren't so great last week. I finally had a winning week. You, on the other hand, not so great. But hey, you hit your lock. It's You're welcome to the club. We're in the winning department now. Yeah, one and four. Uh, lock did win. Um, that was a tough one too. I was I was in just walking walking in Manhattan and looking at the plays and seeing what was happening and saw the game was a double overtime. I'm like, man, I really hope uh, Wake doesn't fuck this up for me. But uh, yeah, the lock hit. Other four didn't. It's all good. I had that uh, like I said in the last podcast. I had that honorable mention parlay that I've been doing the last couple of weeks. Uh, that one. So for all That's of good. you, you know, loyal. Loyal, faithful people out there uh, betting the honorable mention parlay. Um, congratulations to you as well. Um, I got another one this week as well. Uh, it's already been uh, already been locked in in New York. So um, honorable mention parlay is locked in, and then we got uh, five good ones from both of us today. So um, good luck to both <laughs> of us. I think so. Um, I laughed. I texted you when that game went to overtime. I go, shit, you needed to wake, needed to win the kickoff because if they won the ki- uh, won the coin toss, you couldn't have lost because it was seven and the only way you lose is the eight. But of course, they got the stop on the two, so that was good. I was sweating for you right there early. Actually, in the I didn't realize I actually had it at seven and a half when I oh. actually placed the bet in New York, so it was even better. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, I was sweating, sweating for nothing. So, uh, yeah, that is so good. I won... Uh, Want a little bit of money, so uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do this Let, week. All right, let's run back through uh, last week's. Um, you missed the horns and tech under 61. Great performance by the Red Raiders in the upset win. Um, your $40 bet, USC, was not good for either of us. Uh, minus six did not cover. Uh, they were terrible. Um, I'm kind of mad they won that game, honestly, if they're going to lose. Um, your $60 bet, Liberty, did not cover the 26.5 against Akron. Honestly, close game, 21-12. Um, upset of the week, uh, La Tech against Southern Alabama, not quite there. But you did hit the lock. Wake Forest plus se- seven against Clemson. Double overtime, sweated it out. But uh, one and four with the lock, so at least you got the lock in. Um, I had a decent week, though, on the other hand. two and th- uh, Three and two on the week. Um, won my $20 bet. Gophers minus one. Really like that group, uh, PJ Flex group. Uh, $40 bet, Jags plus six and a half. I said it. It was at three at kickoff. They dominated that game. You ja- you grabbed the Jags any point, you would have had a nice little day. Um, beat the shit out of the Chargers. Um, $60 bet, Ohio State covered easily. I was sweating a backdoor at 18 and a half, but 52-21. Man, Ohio State looked good last weekend. Upset, not quite from the Jets. Uh, lost to the Bengals. Bengals looking back on track. And then, like I said, the Trojans, my lock, just terrible from Caleb Williams all game until the last drive, and they survive the upset berth. But we're here. Let's get it going. Scott, what you got for us $20 this week? So uh, I'm a little pissed off about uh, my almost lock of the week last week. I had Liberty almost almost picked them for the lock of the week, but ended up going with $60. So instead, um, I have Old Dominion and Liberty uh, this week. I have Old Dominion plus three and a half because I'm just not very happy about uh, – <laughs> Liberty, um, their quarterback isn't nearly as good as um, uh, some people thought he was. Obviously, only putting up twenty-one last week. Um, Old Dominion, decent team, had a pretty good, uh, pretty good game against Vatek earlier this year. Um, they're at home. Let's see who else they played though. Uh, let's see, Old Dominion's played. They they've had decent opponents already this year. So they have Eastern Carolina. They've had um, Virginia. And they beat Arkansas State last week. Uh, didn't cover, but they did win. Um, and then, like I said, Liberty putting up kind of a stinker against Akron. Not really doing much. And then um, barely barely with the loss with Wake Forest. But um, most of the money is on Liberty. Um, that kind of helps me out a little bit. I feel like that that that's usually a good sign if most of the money is on one team. Uh, three and a half doesn't seem like too much. They are at home. Over under is pretty low, uh, which means it you know, should be a pretty low scoring, tight game mm-hmm. uh, for the most part. So, makes me feel good about taking those points. So, um, field goal game and a half, I think I can probably live with that. So, uh, twenty dollars, Old Dominion Liberty. Um, we'll take Old Dominion plus three and a half. All right, I like it. Um, I'm going with a team last week that I was not disappointed in. That's uh my uh, Golden Gophers up there in Minnesota. Really like this brunch. They got Purdue coming into town. It's a 12-point spread. 
I'm feeling pretty comfortable swallowing these 12 points here. This Minnesota group is fantastic. Number two in the country, rushing the ball. Number two in the country, stopping the run. So they play really good defense. They run the ball. They control the clock. And Purdue, 2-2 two and two on the season, not really impressed. 1-3 and three against the spreads. Okay, they survived Florida Atlantic 1-2. by two. They played Syracuse kind of close, but they were getting dominated for three quarters and had a late fourth quarter comeback. You blew out Indiana State. Do they even play real football at Indiana State? Who the hell knows? And then they played a close game with Penn State, but that was week one. Penn State's a good team, but I just don't think they're up to snuff with this Minnesota team. I really like the Gophers. They've been rolling all season. They've blown out everybody, blew out Michigan State, blew out Colorado. I don't even know Wilford. I don't even know who else they blew out. They blew out New Mexico State week one. They haven't been close. It's at home. Great defense, great offense, control the clock. Purdue, not a very good rushing team. They're a decent passing team, so maybe they could take advantage of that. But Minnesota's defense, they're number two in passing also. So they're just stout up and down the field. I think this is a good bunch. I think 12 is enough. The under is really good. What was the under this game? It's pretty low, uh, relatively speaking. It is, oh my goodness, it is 52, so not even that bad. Uh, I like the under in that game. 52 seems a little high, but I think Minnesota wins this game. Probably about a 21-7 game, maybe 21-3. I think they're really, really dominant up front. This is your Big Ten West winner. Watch out, Ohio State. Watch out, Michigan. They could really give you a run for your money finally in the Big, 12, uh, Big Ten championship game. Yeah, Minnesota's looking really good this year, so I'd... I'd, I'd... Usually take them uh, unless they're playing, like you said, in Ohio State or Michigan or <clears throat> any kind of team like that. I'd definitely look at them first and and see who they're playing. So I like that bet a lot. Um, yeah. So for my forty dollar bet, I'm actually going to Sunday uh, for one time. Um, I have the Broncos and the Raiders. Uh, we have uh, Mister Unlimited playing. That's right. Playing uh, Mister <laughs> Unlimited playing. Uh, Derek Carr and uh, Devontae, the 0 and 3 Derek Carr and Devontae's. Uh, what I've seen from Denver really this year has been they can't score and they don't give up points. Um, that's really the biggest thing this year. They have a great defense, but they can't score either. Uh, it's kind of killing my fantasy team with Javante not doing too much, but Same. Uh, that's neither, neither here nor there. Um, I the, the overrunner is 45 and a half. Man, that just seems unless Devontae and, and Derek kind of hook up. Um, which I mean, they've been they've been looking for Devonte obviously most this year. Pretty much, he's probably getting twelve to fifteen targets every single game, which I mean he deserves it. But um, he'll be covered by Patrick Sertan, which is a little scary. Um, Patrick's probably a top three corner right now. Um, kind of scary. He's going to be a really really good player. Really young kid from Alabama, but forty five and a half. Uh, I want to say it's like over 80% is on the under as well. Um, okay, 79% is on the under. There um, you go, right there. Denver, uh, like I said, they don't score. They've only, I mean, they won that 11 to 10 stinker. They won a 16 to 9 stinker. And then they lost a 17 to 16 stinker. So uh, they don't like playing uh, offensive games. 45 and a half, that's way too many points. That's a you know 24. Uh, like twenty four to the twenty one game ish, yeah. something some some of that something like that. So I don't like that at all. Um, I don't think either team can probably put up seventeen. Um, so truthfully, I think it's a great bet. Um, so I'll take yeah. I'm gonna go Sunday for once in uh, once in my career. Uh, forty five and a half for the under uh, Broncos and Raiders. At least you're on brand if you're going to bet on Sundays. You're on brand betting the under. Uh, very on brand for you. I like that bet a lot. Broncos defense is terrible. I'm hoping the offense gets figured out. Maybe next week, not when I'm playing you in fantasy and Javante this week. So maybe and hopefully they don't get it figured out. Three touchdowns on the season with the Broncos and the offense worst in the league. And then, like you said, Raiders 0-3. They didn't do anything against Tennessee last week. Tennessee just hung a 40 bird, got a, gave up a 40-piece to... Buffalo the week before, so I like the under in that one a lot. I also got a 45-and-a-half point game. Um, probably the best team in the NFL playing this weekend and the most surprising team in the NFL. Yes, the Jags at the Eagles. Got a 45-and-a-half point total here. I know, say what you want, shocker with the Jags. This team should be 3-0. and They threw away week one against the Commanders. They had the lead late in the fourth quarter. Bad pick by Trevor Lawrence, but man, they have really looked good. Dominated the Colts, dominated the Chargers. Trevor Lawrence was the number one pick. He was, you know, the savior, 
right? And he's playing up to it with Doug Peterson. He's looked fantastic this year. Six to one touchdown to interception ratio, second best in the NFL. They are really good. Offensively, pretty good defensive team, but it's this Jags offense. James Robinson, only player with three rushing touchdowns in, you know, three straight games. He scored in every game. I love the Jags this week, and I love the Eagles. They're the best team in football. I'll say it. I liked them before the season. Can't say enough good things about this Eagles offense. They blow everybody out. They've scored 30 points three straight weeks in the NFL. That just doesn't happen. Uh, Totally dominant. So, sorry, 24-8, 24-7. It felt like 30 against Minnesota. But they've been absolutely blowing it up. But I think the Jags are going to be able to move the ball here. Like you said, 45 and a half. That's a 23-24-21 game. I think it's going to be a little higher scoring. I think if anything, the Jags might have a little bit of letdown. The Eagles get 28 here. Jags get to 21. You're easily covering the over right there. So I'm going to take the over here, 45 and a half, and what I think is a high-scoring game. Yeah, I think your your best bet is the Eagles scoring over 30. I think they definitely will. They're, they're pretty... Um... Highly uh, kind of electric offense there with uh, with Miles Sanders and AJ Brown and Devonte and they can they can do it all. Uh, Jalen Hurts will get in there with a probably rushing touchdown or two. So uh, you can bet on them scoring at least four touchdowns. It's really going to come up to you know um, Trevor Lawrence and Etienne and James Robinson and and the boys over there to kind of score a few more times to get it over to that over. So I, I like that bet. I think that bet can probably go over fifty at least. So um, I like that a lot. Um, yeah, so sixty dollars. Uh, we're going back to Saturday football. Um, sorry, <laughs> back to where you come from. Um, some 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 Big Twelve football here. We've uh-huh. we've bet on this team already once uh, for my money line. Iowa State and Kansas. Um, mm, good game. Kansas Jayhawks powerhouse in Lawrence down there. Um, they're three point dogs against Iowa State at home. Uh, Over under is fifty eight and a half. Um, Really looking at who Kansas has played. They have not really played anybody that good so far. Um, they put up all kinds of offense, 35, 48, 55, 56. They're playing probably the best, one of the best defenses in the Big 12 uh, coming up here in Iowa State. Uh, this is probably going to be their really first big test this year, maybe besides West Virginia. and Maybe we don't know how good Houston really is. I don't think they're that good, but... Uh, Iowa State will be probably their first big test, and if Kansas wins, they'll probably finally, for the first time in years, be ranked. That'd be. Really I don't know cool how you rank Kansas ranked. State over Kansas. Um, honestly, I think that's a little head scratcher. Yeah, I mean, Kansas State team. did beat Oklahoma. That's. I mean, that's that's a pretty. They have uh, a loss. Pretty big Give it win. a Kansas. They, they, they had a pretty Show tough loss the week before. I don't know who they. I forgot who they lost to. Somebody it was, bad. Oh, it was too, too lane. It was too lane. Yeah, somebody bad. Not good. Um. Yeah. Iowa State doesn't score very many points, and I don't think Kansas is going to have that electric offense like they've had the last uh, four games, not really playing anybody. 58.5 seems like too much for me. Um, and what do you know? I'm taking the under. 58.5. Uh, <laughs> I, like um, I just think it'll be more of a low-scoring 28-21 to 21, uh, kind of game, maybe 35-20, something like that. Um, 58.5 is definitely doable, but... Um, I think it's mostly Kansas playing a team that, you know, they're, that's, that's actually pretty good this year, and they've, they're favored on the road, uh, which also tells you that they still don't have that much faith in Kansas, which is interesting. Um, it's, yeah. hard, it's a hard uh, pill to swallow, I think. The Kansas it is, it is hard. It is hard for people to understand that Kansas might sort of be kind of good. They I have a competent the football. Way. At the worst, they're competent at football they're, again. They are an organized, competent football team. That's all you can ask for there in, uh, in Lawrence. So, uh, But, yeah, so first big test, really. Uh, they'll be at home, which will help them out a lot. But um, they are going to be home dogs, 58.5. I'll take the under. And um, I'll be in kind of a little – hopefully a little defensive struggle, but we'll see. I, I like it a lot. Uh, you know, the Jayhawk faithful, great fan base for basketball, not really known for their football. But they're buzzing. All the Jayhawks are buzzing about their football team. They're going to be out loud and proud. This Iowa State team played Baylor real, real tough. I know they were at home, but it's a great defensive squad. Baylor's got a really good offense here. So like you said, first real test. There are going to be some hiccups, I think, for this Kansas offense. Um, So I like the under here. I do think Kansas wins this game, though. They find a way. Their quarterback is just an absolutely electric player. Um, I'm heading back out to the Pac-12 here. Um, This is another real surprising team that I don't think anybody thought much of coming into the season. 
but I'm feeling I got some big Penix energy going right now. I'm going with Michael Penix, the Washington Huskies, man, four and zero, and they have looked downright impressive. Their offense is real deal, man. They are slinging the rock all over the place. First in passing in the country. They got some real guys on the outside. I don't get to see many real wide receivers watching AM all the time, but Washington's got some dogs out there. They got a 4 0 Bruins team. They're at UCLA. There's going to be like 12 people at this game. It's the worst fan base in the country, I think. Nobody goes to the UCLA games. So I'm not really too worried about it here. UCLA survived, uh, whatchamacallit, South Alabama. Okay, 32-31. They beat Colorado. Everybody beats Colorado. Not really impressed with this UCLA team whatsoever. Watch why Washington's favorite. It's two and a half right here. I think it might be getting up to three, which is fine. A field goal here. I like this game a lot. I think the offense is so, so explosive for Washington. I just don't know how they're going to be able to stop them and keep up. I think this is the real deal out of the Pac-12. This might be the Pac-12's only shot to get into the playoff. Now that USC's kind of looking shaky here, I can't wait till they end up playing each other. I'm sure they will in the Pac-12. It'll be a Pac-12 championship game, I'm assuming, because they're not in the same division. But I just, I'm not buying the Bruins here, and I'm really buying the Huskies for a legitimate football team finally um, here. So, yeah, I like Washington this week. Yeah, like UCLA struggled a little bit. Um, it's how they played, but they did struggle against uh, one team. What was South, the... Alabama. South Alabama. South Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they they kind of dicked on uh, Colorado a little bit, but yeah, I, I really yeah. like this. I really like this um, this Washington team with with our Indiana boy. Uh, he's putting up a bunch of points up in uh, up in Washington. So I like this like this pick a lot. They are, I mean, on the road. Um, and just barely favorites. It is a little scary, but obviously we've seen UCLA and their stadium. They don't, <laughs> nobody, nobody fills that place anyway. Nobody wants to go to the Rose Bowl and watch it's an UCLA. Hour, it's an so. hour away from campus. It's just hard. Who wants yeah, to drive I mean, an hour? You can't really have a home field advantage when you have 20,000 people at the game. So uh, I don't really think it matters um, if it's on the road or at home. Three points is, I think, is very doable for um, for Washington. I like that a lot. Uh, yeah, so my money line pick last week, I kind of picked a name versus name game a little bit, kind of doing the same thing this this week. Once again, couldn't really find a very good plus two hundred game. Um, so I went with uh, UAB and Rice. Um, UAB is ten point favorites on the road against Rice. Um, not really much to say about this. Um, I'm just looking at money line bets. Ninety-seven percent are on UAB uh, minus three eighty-five. Um, man, that's uh, that's a lot of people taking that money line. So I don't know. I feel a little better taking Rice. Uh, they're getting ten points at home. Uh, I mean, they haven't really played very many worthy opponents. They barely lost to Houston, um, which they were ranked at some point, but. Um, Maybe not as good as we thought. <laughs> Definitely uh, not. They they beat a bum McNeese. They uh, you know beat um, Louisiana Lafayette by twelve, and then uh, you know UAB's played Georgia Southern Liberty. Like I said, not too much to say about these games. They did beat BYU thirty one twenty in the opener. Actually, I take that back. That was last year. What was last year? They only played three games already. All right, so UAB's only played three games. Never mind. Um, and really against nobody. So it's really just a toss-up for me. Um, if I was actually betting it, I'd probably take Rice plus the points. But in this case, I'll uh, swallow the points. Uh, money line is going to be plus 280. So we're going to take Rice at home. Uh, plus 280. And uh, hopefully the name versus name uh, game continues. Uh, well, hopefully it wins this week. Didn't win last week, but hopefully it uh, gets me one this week. Um, I like it. I found another game here. I like this a lot. I had this game bet for my upset. I was going to bet it regularly, but I saw the money line was plus 210. I said, you know what? We're just going to take a bite out of that apple. Um, Big, big SEC matchup. Number seven, Kentucky at number 14, Ole Miss. Kentucky's getting seven points here. I absolutely love the seven points of Kentucky, but you know what? This Wildcats team is ranked seven for a reason. This is a good, good football team. And honestly, Ole Miss barely survived Tulsa, not looking good. They blew out Georgia Tech. They played Troy. They weren't great against Troy. 
I think this Kentucky team is going to cause all sorts of problems defensively for this Ole Miss offense. I think they're really going to struggle to move the ball, and if Ole Miss can't move the ball, their defense is nothing to write home about. I think Kentucky goes in to, where is it, Oxford? Yeah, Oxford, I think it is down there at the Grove, and I think they go get a dub here. I love the Wildcats in this game. I can't wait for Kentucky-Tennessee. That's going to be a great SEC East matchup, and whoever survives that... Maybe it gets Georgia. You know, the SEC East is for real, finally. It's been a long time since it's felt like there's anybody competent in the SEC besides Georgia. SEC East, I should say. Um, I really like Kentucky. I really like Tennessee. But I, I, I'm i not big on Ole Miss here. I think Kentucky goes in there, seals a dub, great defense, run the ball, protect the clock, go home with a W. Yeah, uh, I like that pick a lot. It's it is interesting. I, th- I think I don't think Kentucky's overranked. I think they're really really solid. Um, they are playing on the road. That's a tough place to play. So, getting seven, um, they could they could definitely outright win. I like that a lot. But yeah, Oxford, the Grove, very very tough place to play. Very passionate people down there in Mississippi. <laughs> so, um, they got a good squad themselves. Um, but yeah, so for our Locks of the week. Oh yeah! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Um, I got this at 19 earlier this week. It's already gone up to 22. Um, that scares me a little bit, but I'm gonna take the 22 instead. Um, we've seen Georgia Tech already. Uh, we, well, we saw Lane Kiffin's, as we say, our Ole Miss team put up just an absolute. You know, just their firepower was just 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 killed Georgia Tech for three quarters, and then pretty much he said, "All right, I know I've I've been on the hot seat before. Um, I'm gonna you know, you know take off take call off, off the, dogs. You know, the starters the dogs. and yeah, yeah, call them off and just uh, ride to the end of the game." So um, Georgia Tech's not looking good. They're playing Pittsburgh at home. Uh, so Pittsburgh is at home. Uh, it's minus twenty two. Like I said, was it nineteen? I feel like I need to take Pittsburgh in this one. Um, I liked him better at 19, but 22 is fine too. Um, I don't know. Pittsburgh, decent squad. Probably not as good as uh, most people thought they were going to be. But, um, I mean, they they put up a good fight against Tennessee. They beat West Virginia. Um, and won the last two games, Rhode Island. But Georgia Tech is really the, 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 the thing we're looking at here. They just are absolutely abysmal, man. They... Um, they lost to UCF last week. Like I said, forty-two nothing to Ole Miss. Got beat up by Clemson. Um, who's that? WCU is that Western Carolina or something? I don't know who they played that that second that's week. But not a real team, that's for sure. Not, not a real team is what we're looking at. But twenty-two does seem like a lot. I'm still gonna take it uh, with a lock. Pittsburgh minus twenty-two. A little scary, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a big number. It's a big number. It's a big number there at home, but um, you know I'm committing, and we're gonna take uh, the Pittsburgh Panthers. Hey, Pitt's Pitt's not that bad, honestly. They got off to a bad start, but they played Kentucky, or Tennessee. They took. They should have beat Tennessee. They had Tennessee in overtime. Tennessee is the real deal um, over there. So I don't. And, think- and Georgia, Georgia Tech is getting you know 59 percent of the bets. Um, so I got. I think I think betters don't like the 22 either. So hopefully that kind of works in my favor. Uh, yeah, ninety percent money line is on Pittsburgh. Not even close, and it's looking like the over is getting bet on. It's over forty nine. So hopefully, it's over forty nine with a minus twenty two. Seems like a pretty lopsided game. So it's like a thirty eight to ten ish game. Yeah, that's uh, a, a lot. Less than that. Ten feels yeah. like a lot for George Tech, honestly. Yeah, like thirty four, thirty four to ten maybe. Or so. I don't know. I'm not doing math right, but yeah, thirty four take- to. 34-14 is what it's kind of looking at. So that seems about right, I guess. Okay, yeah, I like that. Um, I am going to head not back over to Sunday, but we're heading on over to Monday Night Football. Um, Little NFC West showdown, the Rams at the Niners. Um, San Francisco looked terrible last weekend on Sunday Night Football. The offense was abysmal, lost 11-10. to Jimmy G's walking out of the back of the end zone to lose the game. He does not look good. Now, I expect him to be a little bit better, but it feels like the guy's checked out. It was all Trey Lance. He didn't even expect to be back in San Francisco. He's expecting to be traded. Didn't happen. He feels checked out. I saw a video of him talking, Kyle Shanahan, these plays, you know, they suck. You know, he's not happy. 
The defense is still good in San Francisco, but man, the offense struggling. They got the Rams coming into town. The Rams are still the defending Super Bowl champions. They haven't been that crisp through the first three weeks. Honestly, didn't impress me against Arizona. Obviously got blown out on the opening night against Buffalo. Let a big lead slip against Atlanta. Matt Stafford leads the NFL in interceptions. I think that's going to come down. I think the Rams, you know, a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover after winning. A little, one extra cocktail, one less rep in the gym. I still think this is a really good football team. I still think they're going to figure this thing out. They're getting a point and a half here on the road. I really, really, really like the Rams this week. I think they're going to figure this thing out. The Niners feel so disjointed. They feel like they're not cohesive. Jimmy G doesn't want to be there. It's It's just a mess, it feels like, for them offensively. They're not going to be able to score. Who's covering Cooper Cup? They really don't have a guy to go cover Cooper Cup. The man is open 24-7. He is Mr. 7-11. So I really like the Rams here. The defense is still really good for the Rams. They can't afford to lose this game against the Niners. They can't be 2-2, two and two, you know, after four weeks. So I think they actually get this thing going here in L.A. I really like them. I don't expect this game to be close. I love getting a point and a half. I think they blow out the Niners. It just feels real bad in San Francisco right now. Yeah, I had a bet with the uh, with the Niners uh, on what Sunday night. Yeah, that was yeah. Um, that was one of the worst football games I've ever watched. I that went was to bed. And I, I, both the offenses were struggling. Like you said, Jimmy G stepping out of the back of the end zone. Um, I mean, I I don't know. It, you would think with a team with with a veteran guy like Jimmy G, and then you know Debo Samuel. No, they could get things done, some offense going, but they they look pretty dead. Um, yeah, playing the Rams, Super Bowl champion. So, I like I like uh, like the Rams getting points as well. That 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 um that helps out the bet a lot. So that, that's big um, tasty right there, getting those. Points. Definitely, I love. I it um, feels like a rat though. It could be a rat. I am could be well a rat. aware. It could be a rat. Um, what about your honorable mentions? Your honorable mention parlay you've teased for us. What do you got for us? Yeah, so I've had I uh, got on my honorable mention parlay. I have uh, I got money on it right now. It's in uh, it's in New York. Uh, seventy five dollars. It's plus uh, five seventy eight. Michigan minus uh, ten and a half at Iowa. Um, obviously Iowa doesn't. Uh, well, <laughs> they scored some points last we, week. We, 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 I said they would hit they, the over. <laughs> in they that they Rutgers did, game. but. Last year is kind of the big thing for me. They were, I think, almost exactly the same. Um, yeah, Michigan was minus 12 last year, 42 to 3. Uh, they got absolutely killed. Um, Iowa doesn't play very, doesn't play good teams very well. They, uh, it, their, their defense has, you know, up, up to a certain point, they can, they can stop people. But once they play a really, really good team and they get figured out, GG's. Uh, I think Michigan's going to do. More than more than ten and a half to him, I think it might be an absolute blowout. Um, so I think that was a pretty easy one. Uh, second one over uh, fifty six and a half, Oklahoma State Baylor. Um, Spencer Sanders, veteran guy for uh, been there for like ten Oklahoma years, State, and then, like. yeah, been there forever. And then Sh- uh, Sharpen or Shapen for uh, for Baylor, also a pretty good quarterback. Fifty six and a half seems like pretty easy bet for both of them. Both of them can score pretty quickly, especially. Especially Oklahoma State, they can score very, very quickly. Um, and then Georgia didn't cover last week. Um, I forgot who they played last week, but I know they didn't cover. Kent State, Kent State, they did not cover against Kent State. Kent State. They did not cover against Kent State, and they didn't cover against Sanford. But against real teams, they have been covering. They covered against Oregon. They covered against South Carolina. This week, it's twenty-eight points against Missouri at Missouri. <sighs> um, Missouri, how they lost to- last week? Oh, good God. Yeah, so bad. Um, Missed a chip not, shot field not, goal, fumbled in the end zone and overtime going in. Yeah, Ugh. not great. Um, last looks like th- almost three years. It looks like in nineteen it was twenty seven to nothing. But before that, forty nine fourteen, forty three six. There was a forty three twenty nine. There was a fifty three twenty eight. Georgia just has been dominating Missouri. No matter where they play, it does not matter. I think four touchdowns. Could be covered in the first three quarters, hopefully. Uh, maybe at halftime. Actually gone up to 29. So, people are taking Georgia. Uh, that extra point <laughs> isn't good. Um, I'd rather take 28 than 29. But, Great value. Um, I, got, I got it at 28 yesterday. So, I like Georgia minus 28. Um, like I said, plus, plus around 580. Um, I put 75 on it to win 
like uh, I don't want to do the math, but it's a little over a little over three fifty, something like that. So um last week it hit. So get out there and bet the uh, honorable mention parlay. And then if you want to bet the other ones too, you can do that. But yeah. Those haven't been hitting very well, so maybe not. <laughs> they uh you hate when those scores move over. You know, that extra point over a score really makes things awkward, don't it? Um yeah, yeah, well, over. twenty-eight to twenty-nine is yeah. terrifying. It's can be four, terrifying. Four touchdowns I don't, to five scores, you know. Because I don't think George is gonna kick too many field goals. So No, um, they get sevens. Yeah, exactly. That's definitely scary. Um, all right, let me run through mine first, and then we'll let you run through yours, and we'll wrap this bad boy up. All right, my $20 bet this week, I got the Golden Gophers minus 12 at home against Purdue. Uh, for $40, Jags at the Eagles. I like the over here at 45 and a half. $60 bet, Washington at the UCLA Bruins, minus 2.5. Big fan, big Penix energy over here. Uh, for my upset this week, I like Kentucky to go into Oxford and steal one from Ole Miss. Kentucky is number 7 for a reason. Real deal. I think it's a good game. Love them getting 7 points here. Worst case scenario if you just want to take a bite out of that. And then for my lock of the week, the LA Rams, your defending Super Bowl champions, getting a point and a half against a 49ers team that... I feel like is kind of done for me, but uh, all right. What about you? What do you got? So yeah, so for twenty dollars, I got Old Dominion plus three and a half uh, versus Liberty at home. Um, screw you, Liberty, for fucking <laughs> me over last week. Uh, forty dollar bet. We have the under forty five and a half Denver in Las Vegas. Uh, Sixty dollars. We have the under fifty eight and a half uh, Iowa State in Kansas. Uh, money line pick, uh, Rice plus two eighty uh, at home against UAB, and then uh, our lock of the week. A um, little scary, but we'll take Pittsburgh minus twenty two uh, at home against uh, Georgia Tech, and then we've gone over my uh, honorable mention. So don't worry about that. But yeah, hopefully we have a good week. Um, it should be. I feel like we're getting really we're getting dialed in here. I think. Um, I think so. I mean, in- the lines are. Di- the lines are definitely getting more difficult. Uh, I think it was a lot easier. It's always earlier earlier in the year. It feels like it's a lot easier, and then the you know the the odds Vegas. makers start to figure it out a little bit. So, except for A and M, Vegas can't figure out A and M. No, I mean who who really can? No one <laughs> no one knows anything about them. They they yeah you can barely barely beat a Miami team and they can barely sneak out a you know. They- but, but you uh, beat number 10 Arkansas somehow, and now you're four-point dogs at an unranked Mississippi. It's They're an enigma wrapped in a fortune cookie. They're just, who the hell knows what team you're going to get. Yeah, uh, the only thing you can bet on typically with A&M is the under. So, uh, uh, under, and spe- the under. Can we bet a special teams play? Like they'll for- The special teams will block a field goal, they'll, muff up, they'll force a muff, they'll run back a kick. Special teams the best in the country by far. It's a, a defense, a defensive touchdown or a special teams play uh, in any A and M game is a lock. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, All right, I so like frustrating. it. Oh my god, it's the worst fan base to be a part of. But hey have to do it um all right that's gonna do it for us this week again i'll put the links down check out our picks on action if you want to keep tabs with us hopefully i'm feeling a five and a week coming up for one of us some soon here At some point hopefully I, I think we're gonna turn it around it's again again if you're not subscribed to the channel click that subscribe button like this video really helps the channel out a lot just past 500 subscribers absolutely incredible love doing this podcast with you every week scott um so yeah and we'll see y'all next week Thank you.